Welcome to Order Flow Trading Course, lesson number six, different types of trading in the market. My name is Michael Valtos. I'm the founder of orderflows.com. First, a disclaimer. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. CFTC Rules 4.41 Hypothetical or simulated performance results have certain limitations. Unlike an actual performance record, simulated results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, the results may have under or overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs, in general, are also subject to the fact that they are designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. Different types of trading in the market. Lesson 6. There are different types of trading occurring in the market every day. You have speculation, hedging, long-term trading, short-term trading, trend following, fundamental trading, technical trading, algorithmic trading, and much, much more. You know, you can write a book on the different types of traders and trading going on in the, ma in the market. Does it matter? No. Um, you know, people have you believe, oh, you got to follow, uh, you know, Long-term trading is the way to go. Short-term trading is the way to go. Trend following is the way to go. Fundamental trading is the way to go. There's really so many different ways to approach the market. Um, you could read the book Market Wizards, and you know everybody in the book is a successful trader. Do they all trade the same? No. They all have you know different ways of trading. Um, you know you could spend your your life trying to analyze all the different ways of trading, or you know before you even start to trade. Um, you know. You, you, what you want to know is, is why the market is moving when it's moving and you know how to get in on on the move I mean that's what trading profitably is, is, is about is you know getting in before the market moves and you know catching the move now you know one of the things that people don't understand um, is before the market moves, you know, there has to be a reason for the market to move. And it's often going to start when there's a big order coming into the market. The market's just not going to start moving for the sake of moving. There has to be uh, an impetus in the market, you know, something to get the market started. And you don't know what's behind another person's trade. You don't know when that 2,500 lot order hits the sales desk that needs to be executed. What you want to be is you want to be ready for, you know, when that big order starts coming into the market that you can react and trade against it. Now, what is important is seeing what the different types of traders are doing and did in the market to make your trading decisions wrong. You can't compete with the big institutional traders. You'll go broke. What you want to do is you want to see what they're doing and ideally you'd like to be in the same direction. You know, honestly, you know, you're trading, you know, five lots, ten lots, you know, say even, you know, 25 lots. And, you know, you're going against a bank that's got a position of, of you know, two and a half thousand lots that they're trying to accumulate. And, you know, you're trying to go against them with a 25 lot order. You'll get, you'll get run over. You'll get, you know, eaten alive, so to speak. Um, you don't know when, you know, when the big order is going to be hitting the trading desk, you know. To me, it's it's like sometimes you know these banks, the, the traders are just sort of lying and wait, waiting, you know, waiting for the market to show signs of life, and you know they'll, they'll pounce. I mean, like you know the lion in you know in the in Africa, he's just sitting there waiting, you know, waiting for his opportunity. You know, he's just patient, um, you know, more than anything else. You know, a professional trader, a successful trader, is patient. You know, they're not action junkies they don't like to just get in and get out you know live for the action um, you know they want to be around for a long time you know they got families to feed you know they can afford to be patient and you know wait for the right opportunity 
but you know once an institutional institutional trader starts to get into the market they're going to leave behind evidence of their view of the direction of the market um, you can see their volume that they trade you can see it in the volume footprint chart like I said they can't hide their trades once they're executed you know they could try and hide the trade as it's happening they're not going to show you know 500 lot when they've got you know 3,000 to buy you know they'll show 25 at a time but you know the order will keep refreshing and it'll show up in the volume uh, you know traded volume on the bids and offers provide the clues that the trader you know regarding the intensity of, of the move in areas where they have backed off so you know if you have an area that's being defended by you know a big trader you're going to see it in the volume you know they may not be showing the full size you know if you're looking at the the book you know the bid offer you may see you know size of 10 by you know 10 on the bid 50 on the offer but the guy that's got 10 on the bid you know may have 1200 behind it you know he's only showing 10 you know and you're thinking oh there's only 10 on the bid you know it's it's not that strong but it actually is strong but what you want to see is you want to see what the volume is at that price how much is traded there and you know determine you know if they're defending that area um, you know or you know if they're done defending the area say they got they got no more bullets you know they, they may have lost interest already and given up and, and say okay you know I'll, I'll take my lumps and I'll, I'll come back again and reassess the market later now this is something you hear a lot with uh, you know, with order flows nowadays is when a trader goes long in the market he automatically becomes a seller in the future or when a trader goes short in the market he becomes a buyer in the future in general yes that's that's the case I mean for most I mean, obviously for retail traders yes um, you know for some traders no you know they may very well you know, buy with the intention of, of taking delivery or making delivery if they're, if they're short um, it's not always the case that as soon as someone is long in the future they'll be a seller more often than that yes but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a seller you know in the next 10 minutes they may be a seller in the next five weeks if that um, you know it really depends on the price movement that affects the traders decision once they're in a position um, I'm, I'm referring to you know short-term trader if the market is moving against them yeah they're going to get out relatively quick because by definition they're a short-term trader if it's a long-term trader you know and they go long in the market and the market starts moving against them for a few days you know they may not necessarily be looking to get out right away um, you know basically you know, they'll assess the market and then decide what to do but for a short-term trader you know if the market starts moving a couple points against them they're already looking for a reason to uh, close the trade and get out the amount of fundamental information available to traders nowadays overwhelming um, there's no way a trader can see and process every bit of information that may influence you know the price of a market and there's really so much information out there nowadays you, know, you can look at the weather you could look at um, you know, the germination counts for for the corn um, you know really pick any market you know there's hundreds of factors that you know that go in to influence the market um, but you know what you should think about with the information is how it will influence the other traders how they're going to react to the information um, I mean, you may think it's you know something that's very important but you know maybe the rest of the market doesn't think it's important you know you have to decide if it's something that you know may affect the uh, you know the, the long-term views that you know there could be a shift in supply and demand um, you know when there's shifts in supply and demand that's where money is really made you're not necessarily making money on these little you know fluctuations you know up and down for you know a couple of points you, know, you, you want the big moves where you're going to be able to get you know a lot of points rather than just a few ticks um, you know a lot of people think you know making a few ticks is, is great you know they can just make a few ticks a day 
you know, it's happy days, but, you know, in reality, you want to be making points on a regular basis, not just a couple of ticks. You, know, you want meat, meaty trades, you know, you want the meat and the potatoes, uh, you know, you don't want the, the little french fries or, you know, the salad to fill you up, you know, you want the big steak dinner, you know, you want something that's going to fill your belly and, you know, and understanding when there are shifts in supply and demand is, you know, where the big opportunities are going to be, um, you know, and, you know, you don't need to know, you know, every underlying fundamental piece of information that comes into the market. You know, what you want to understand is, you know, the people that have access to all, you know, the best information, what they're doing in the market, you know, those are the traders you want to follow. You know, order flow allows you to take all the little bits of information that's coming to the market and determine the market psychological response to that information. You know, like I said, you don't need to analyze every single little bit of information that's being done for you by the, the bigger participants, you know, the institutional traders, the hedge funds, the real money accounts, the commercial traders. You know, they're analyzing that, you know, based on their view of supply and demand. And they have a view that, like I said, that you're not going to have, you know, the regular institutional traders is not going to have, you know, insight into the market that the institutional traders have. Um, you know, I mean, they know the supply chain, you know, they know the, the shipping rates, they know everything. Uh, well, at least they pretend to know everything. But, you know, traders buy and sell in response to every little bit of information. And, and yeah, like I said, I, I think it's, you know, you see these people, they watch TV, you know, they're trading, and, it's, you know, someone says something to you, oh, you know, all of a sudden they got to sell us a piece, you know, or, or buy crude. Well, you know, by the time that information's already, you know, hit the news speaker's mouth, it's already been factored into the market. Um, you know, if you're trying to trade every little bit of information, you're going to get chopped up. Um, like I said, you know, you want to get the big moves, and, you know, you want to follow the big institutional traders. And you're going to see their response in price and volume that's traded. You know, you're going to you're going to notice when price starts moving away. You know, if you think your price should be going higher and it just sort of stops, goes nowhere, and it starts selling off, you know, you're looking. You got to ask yourself, why is it doing that? You know, everything says is bullish about the market, but all of a sudden, you know, we're not going higher. We're starting to, you know, we're starting to sell off. Why? Why is that? Um, you know, here, for example, this is a crude chart. You know, the market went up, it started coming down, and, you know, you're seeing these areas where, you know, you get these big imbalances, you know, on, on this move up. Okay, so, you know, you got 426 sold into the bid here, 504 here. You know, we go back up, you know, you're seeing, well, you got these big selling imbalances, why isn't the market going down? You know, you're not necessarily seeing big buying imbalances in the other direction. Obviously, you know, you got 679, you know, we started coming off from the high. You, know, you got this big selling imbalance here. Why isn't the market selling off? Why isn't it going lower? You know, there's a lot of people selling, you know, 679 lots, you know, 470 below it. You got to understand what's going on. There's somebody bidding there. You know, when you're seeing size like this in a market, you know, understand your market and understand what's solid size what's big size for that market you know this is a crude market this is a 10 range chart you see in 679 you know 470 right below it that's a thousand lots you know right at this level obviously there's somebody supporting the market you know earlier you saw you know 426 169 191 you know right around it you know you're talking 800 here you know 500 295 you're talking another 800 here so obviously there's somebody that's interested in buying the little breaks. You know, the market comes up, it comes off a little bit, and they're bidding. You know, they're happy to buy it on a pullback. You know, the market pops back up, comes right back down, and these guys are back in here. They're buying again. You know, even though there's there's selling imbalances, you know, and by definition the market should should sell off because those are big selling imbalances, but it's not. So obviously there's somebody supporting the market. You know, being able to spot that is, you know, what's going to make you stand out from the rest of the traders that are that are trading in the market so okay this is again this is a crude chart okay you know just really quick 
market's going up, going up, going up. Okay, you're seeing these aggressive buyers here. You got a big buying imbalance right up here near the high, which is you want to you want to see. You know that's normal. Um, you're expecting to see a lot of buying happening near the high. You know people are expecting the market to go higher, and it does. It, go, it pops right back up. You know it hits a new high. You got a divergence up there, which you know is a sign. You say, ooh, okay, you hit a new high, but you got a negative delta. So obviously selling came in right at the high. And then immediately after you get an aggressive selling, you get a stack selling imbalance. And what happens? The market falls right over. You know, you hit the high, and you know, you see in the order flow, first you got you know, you got your divergence. Um, you know, you hit the new high, but where's the rest of the buying? You know, the selling overtook the buying in that bar. And then in the next bar, you got a stack selling imbalance, you know, where there's a lot of sellers coming in. And kicking off a bunch of selling imbalances, and then the market just sold right off. You know, again, you've seen this chart a lot, uh, you know, in the earlier lessons. But you know, it's a perfect example. Okay, this is S and P's at 1940. You know, we worked our way up, hit the high. You got a big stopping volume up here. 1940, you got 1600 lots traded there. The market couldn't get past it. You know, there's there's obviously somebody with big supply there. And, you know, the market came off, you know, slightly before, you know, you have a small print, you know, immediately after, again, you got a small print. The market did try to go back up, it couldn't take off the high. You know, you, you get selling imbalances right up at near the top of the bars. And, you know, the market just, it just sells right off. You know, why isn't the market, you know, keep going up? Well, yeah, you can see you have this, this big volume here. You know, you gotta be, always be asking yourself, what's going on in the market? You know, you, when you see things that are not normal, when you see big volumes that, you know, at ends of moves and the market can't get past it, you know, why? You know, what's happening? There's a shift. You know, obviously there's somebody with a lot of supply to sell. You know, and, you know, they're basically saying, you know, to all the, all the buyers that want to try and take it higher, you know, sure, I'll sell whatever you want, whatever, how much you want, and I'll, I'll sell it to you. No problem. You know, again, this is similar, you know, you, you're working your way up, work, 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 you know, positive deltas, you know, even this bar, it's a red candle, still got positive delta, so, you know, there's still a good buying in there. Right up here near the high, you got a buying imbalance, you know, you're just, uh, you know, two ticks off the high, it squirts up, you, you know, you, you make a new high, well, what happens? You know, you got a divergence, you know, the sellers came in, even, okay, you will, you know, forgive this bar. The next bar, again, the sellers have come in. Okay, so you're not yet convinced. You know, this third bar you have here, you know, you got a ratio, a single print, and you got a bunch of selling imbalances in the bar. I mean, you know, if, if you didn't really notice it in the second bar, in this third bar, it's really quite obvious. You know, so you have to ask yourself, why isn't the market going higher? You see this nice buying imbalance. Where is the follow through? It's not there. And all of a sudden you, you see the big shift in delta where the sellers are taking over. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, order flows will, will really help you see. Um, I mean, sometimes it's very obvious, like in this case, other times, yeah, you know, it does take a little bit of work to understand it, but, uh, you know, over time, you'll understand it a, a lot clearer. <laughs> So, you know, this is a move, you know, as it's happening, you know, it's going straight up. And, you know, understanding the order flow will help you catch moves like this. You know, you see the point controls all starting, you know, each one subsequently higher, acting as support for the previous bar. You know, the deltas are all positive. You're seeing, you know, single prints. You know, on the way up, which is, you know, helping to indicate to you that there is, you know, the market is starting to pull away. You know, earlier, you know, the market was just sort of, you know, in this area here, in a little bit of a range. But, you know, now you're starting to see, you know, heavy volume on the bid side, you know, which is indicating that there's support in the market. You know, even though the market's going up, you know, people are trying to sell into the bid to pull it back down. Push it back down. You know, you got a thousand traded here. You got 765 here. You know, 500, 400. 
and, and the market's moving up. You know, it's it's moving up nicely. You know, without much resistance. And, you know, you're seeing you know it's only a few hundred being traded on the offer on the way up. Um, you know, there's some size here. 826 is the biggest amount that's traded on the move up. Here you got 1200. You know, it's the path of least resistance. You know, the buyers are taking it up. You know, and it's not on thin volume. It's it's decent volume. You know, each bar is uh, 5,000, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 3,000, you know, 5,000. You know, people are interested in moving the market. You know, somebody is buying it up, you know, accumulating a position nicely. They're not necessarily overpowering the market and, you know, just buying it up immediately. You know, it's happening over a period of time. You know, this is 1036 up to 1040. It's a five minutes, you know, but it's a nice move from 1880 basically up to 1890. You know, it's a nice gradual move. You know, these are the types of moves that you want to catch. Okay, so, you know, this is a, again, this is an e-mini chart. And, you know, we, we come back up, come off a little bit, come back up. You often see that with, uh, you know, with just a normal a normal trading day, you know, where the market's just sort of bing, 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 bing around. And, you know, what you want to do is, you know, you want to catch this move up. You know, you're seeing on the move up, you're seeing some early buying imbalances. You don't necessarily see them later. Um, you know, then you're starting to see the selling imbalances come in. You know, a couple more buying imbalances as you push a little bit higher. Then the selling imbalances, you know, you got three here, one here, two here. I'm sorry, three here, one here. You know, as the market moves back down, you know, you're not seeing any more buying come in. You know, to a lesser extent, after you hit this high, you got this bar here with, you know, three buy, three selling imbalances, you know, and a couple of selling imbalances either side of it. And, you know, the market did come back up a little bit, you know, it took out the high of this bar. And, you know, and slightly before it, you got a few buying imbalances. But what happens? It shifts, you know, and then you're starting to see the selling imbalances come in on the way down, which is, you know, what you want to see. You know, here... You, you thought it was going to happen a little bit early, but you know the buying came in. You know you could, you can see that. So you know, had you gotten short here, you know, and you have to stop, you know, here, you could just sort of see that, you know, okay, maybe it's not happening right now. You you could get out at a little bit of a scratch or a loss, but then you know, again, when it starts to happen, you know, it's literally around the same price, and you catch the move, you know, from 1904 down to, you know, 1899 or, or lower. I mean, that's what order flows will tell you. You know, they'll tell you the different types of trading that's happening in the market. You know, when people are being, um, you know, aggressive in the sense that, that they're overwhelming the other side of the market. And you, you tend to see that with the imbalances, you know, as they're occurring. You know, when the market is going sideways, you know, it's, it's really hard to get a, a gauge on the market. But once the market starts moving, you know, order flows will help you determine... Uh, you know, the intensity of the move. You know, if you're starting to see a lot of imbalances come in as the market starts moving away from a high or a low, you know, that's that's important. You know, that's where you're going to make money on. That's, you know, that's that's the, the value that exists in order flow that you're not going to see on a regular bar chart. Um, and I can't stress it enough. You know, order flows allows you to see, you know, the intensity of a move that you just can't see in a candlestick chart or a bar chart by itself. So, you know, anyway, that's the end of lesson six, you know, the different types of trading that's happening in the market. In the next lesson, I'll explain the best futures markets to trade order flow. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, what's the best market to trade order flow? There really is no one best market. I'll discuss many of the markets that you can, you can trade. Basically, any market out there you can trade as long as it's a, you know, something that trades with a decent amount of volume on an intraday basis. Uh, order flow can be applied to it. You know, I, I trade a wide range of contracts from grains to financials to, to a lesser extent currencies, but uh, a lot of commodities, you know, things that follow supply and demand. You know, supply and demand is a law. It's not a theory. So, you know, the same laws that apply to supply and demand in the wheat market also apply to supply and demand in the index futures markets. So in the next lesson, uh, I'll explain 
the different types of markets and that you can trade. Is anyone better? It really depends on your risk tolerance and you know the, the time you have to devote to trading. But uh, we'll go over that in the next uh, next lesson, lesson seven. Thank you.